In our last video, we talked about how you have primary genetic hypercoagulability states and you have secondary or acquired hypercoagulability states. And in this video, we're going to talk about this one and this one the heparin induced thrombocytopenia and the anti phospholipid antibody syndrome both secondary or acquired hypercoagulability states. So in the first one, let me give you an example. Say you have a patient that comes to you because you're, she's having or he is having blood clots and you know, or, or you're in the hospital and you find a patient that is prone to uh, blood clots or thrombosis and you give them heparin because heparin is an anticoagulant a blood thinner, if you will. So you give them heparin and then, you know, a few days after that you notice that they're having more blood clots and you run some blood work and they have thrombocytopenia. What is that? That is low platelets. They have low number of platelets. They have thrombocytopenia. And you must be thinking, what in the world is going on? Well, in that case, you think of heparin induced thrombocytopenia or hit syndrome hit syndrome is when the unfractioned heparin it it creates or induces autoantibodies to the complexes of heparin and a platelet membrane protein also known as platelet factor 4 so for some reason this heparin it is targeted by the immune system and then the immune system creates antibodies to heparin when it is bound to this platelet membrane protein. So what you do is you switch their meds to low molecular weight heparin and then you use that and that should take care of it and there are several drugs that are low molecular weight heparins. So that's heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, or the HIT syndrome. Heparin causes uh, more, uh, heparin usually is an anticoagulant, but in this case it causes more blood clots, and you have thrombocytopenia, and it's because your immune system is creating antibodies to this heparin, to this drug. What's the second one? The second one is the antiphospholipid antibody syndrome or lupus anticoagulant syndrome. And what happens here is there's autoantibodies and it's an immune um, disease, but it's not because of some drug. It's just that your immune system creates antibodies that are directed against this anionic phospholipids or this cardiolipin or uh, more, more accurately described as plasma protein antigens that are unveiled by binding to such phospholipids as prothrombin. So when you have you know, this thrombosis happening and you know, this is just a type of thrombosis or a type of syndrome that causes thrombosis or forming of blood clots, it's because your immune system is creating antibodies against these anionic phospholipids, e.g. cardiolipin. And you can have primary antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, or you can have secondary antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. Primary antiphospholipid antibody syndrome is when the patient does not have SLE signs and symptoms. So when the patient has SLE signs and symptoms, also SLE is another uh, immune, uh, immune disease, but when they do not have SLE signs and symptoms, and they but they have thrombosis or have this hypercoagulability state, then they, can, they are considered having primary antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. If they also have signs and symptoms of SLE, then they're, and they, ha so if they have SLE signs and symptoms, and they have this uh, hypercoagulability or thrombosis, then they are considered to have secondary antiphospholipid 
antibody syndrome. Okay, we'll see you in the next video.